In a fast-paced world, many of us struggle with overthinking and worry that leaves us feeling overwhelmed or stuck. In this podcast, we will hear stories of successful individuals and have conversations and ways to reach our true potential by embracing every micro detail of our identity, especially the flaws that make us unique. This is your host, Maria Grace Wolf. I'm a Filipino-American entrepreneur, psychotherapist, and mom of two boys. And my mission is to amplify diverse perspectives and experiences and inspire your journey to wellness and fulfillment. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is Maria Grace Wolk of Own Your Journey podcast. Really appreciate you taking the time to listen. Since the last episode, I've gotten some questions regarding chores and children. Should we be assigning our kids chores? How can I get them to do chores? And what kind of chores are okay? I get it. Getting kids to do chores is a really common pain point among families. And the truth is, getting kids to help with chores without grumbling, whining, and complaining can be really hard. But maybe after listening to this episode, it might be worth the struggle for the mental health benefits of it all. Every family has their own unique way of how they run their household, right? So I think that there are no right or wrong answers to these questions. But I believe that household chores benefits kids, parents, the family, and our overall community. Doing chores teaches kids responsibility, accountability, and perseverance, traits that are necessary to becoming capable adults. Growing up in a Filipino culture with the first few years of my life in the Philippines, I was born with the understanding that doing chores was not an option. It was expected. You know, as a daughter, um, as well as my sisters and I, we were expected to help with keeping the household in order. As early as I can remember, probably as early as I can hold a walise, which is a Tagalog word for broom or a feather duster, to, you know, to dust. I remember those were part of our daily chores, sweeping the floor, dusting the countertops, the dishes. Our mom taught us to always keep things organized and clean. We made the bed before we go out and play. We just never questioned it growing up. It was just the way it was, the way we did things. And looking back now, I remember it being fun, right? Well, maybe it wasn't fun when we were assigned to do it and we had to, but but the memories of them now, as I think back, are pleasant. I remember having to water the plants My mother has a green thumb. She's so good at keeping plants alive. She had lots of like orchids on the side of our yard. And, you know, she had all these different tropical plants. We had red hibiscus that bordered our front yard. My sisters and I, we all shared the chores and we took turns feeding our pets, tending the garden, washing dishes, washing and folding laundry, anything you can think of. I remember it being more of a fun activity and not a tedious chore because we did them together. And sometimes we would make a game out of it. Before recording this episode, you know, I asked my husband what chores he remembered doing as a child. My husband is German and Czech and he grew up in Houston, Texas. And he said he remembers taking the garbage out, mowing the lawn. I asked my friends and colleagues about their childhood chores, and they also had similar experiences. So I think, at least for my generation, doing chores was part of our childhood's routine. Today, my two boys share their household chores, and they do them together. My boys, who are now 9 and 11, are responsible for taking the garbage out, emptying the dishwashers, setting the table, and making their own beds. In our fast-paced society now, where we're always trying to be productive and trying to get as much done as possible in less and less time, 
assigning chores to our children can easily be forgotten or not prioritized for so many different reasons. And some of the common ones are because we know we can get the work done so much faster if we do it ourselves, right? Because they already have so much activity. So we may feel like, you know what, let's give them a pass. And also because sometimes we feel like it's not worth the struggle. It's not worth that back and forth, that complaining, that nagging, that grumbling. So we don't bother. A 75-year Harvard study concluded that kids who had chores fared better later in life compared to those who didn't. And in this study, they examined the childhood psychosocial variables and biological processes that predicted health and well-being later in life. Chores were the best predictor of which kids were more likely to become happy, healthy, independent adults. Research also shows that kids who have household responsibilities are more likely to also help others outside the home. When kids are introduced to being helpful and they see their contributions as valuable, they are more likely to continue to model this behavior outside of the home, at school, and in our society. When kids help out with at-home tasks such as setting the table or making their bed, they will feel competent and capable as well as helpful and responsible. Confidence and self-efficacy can improve as your child learns and uses their abilities to complete a chore, as well as learn to feel pride in their work when they are reminded that their chores help everyone in the family. Children will begin feeling more successful and confident as they complete and master new chores. And everyone will feel proud of the work that's done, right? You know, when they do chores, it teaches children life skills such as time management that will help them stay on task and be more productive for the rest of their lives. If chores are divided evenly, there will be more time for parents and children to spend time together once everyone's tasks are completed. And also the structure and routine can help parents build their child's self-control and in turn reduces, this reduces power struggles with parents, right? Structure and routines teach kids how to constructively manage themselves and their environments. Routines are like the kids' instructions that guide them, you know, what to do next. And this will eventually become a habit eliminating power struggles because you aren't bossing the child around, right? The, the activity of taking out the garbage on Thursday nights or making the bed as soon as you get up becomes just what we do at this time of the day. Parent stops being the bad guy and the nagging is reduced. Teaching kids chores can start as young as two years old. Of course, the chores should be age appropriate, keeping in mind their developmental level and, you know, being really specific with instructions when working with younger children. The key is being consistent and patient. And again, I emphasize patience because that is important here. Some of the age appropriate chore ideas for children should, this should give you an idea on where to start, right? Two to three year olds can put toys away or help with organizing clean laundry, like matching socks. So that, that can even be a fun game for them. Four to five year olds um, can help feed pets, make their beds, maybe not perfectly, and help clear the table after dinner. Six to seven year olds can wipe tables and counters, put laundry away and vacuum floors. Seven to nine year olds can load and unload the dishwasher help prepare meals and make their own lunch. And 10 to 11 year olds can clean kitchens or bathrooms and also mow the lawn. Children age 12 and above can, you know, wash the car, babysit younger siblings and help shop for groceries with a list. So these are just some ideas of what they can do for, you know, what the age appropriate chores are for children. If, you know, you don't know where to start, but maybe this will give you an idea. So just to go back to addressing the reasons we often decide not to assign chores, I think I mentioned that sometimes, you know, it's easier for us to do it because the work gets done faster if we do it ourselves. 
You know, the dishes, the laundry, setting the table. I know some of us may have a certain particular way of doing it. And when we delegate to our children, it takes longer. We end up spending more time giving them instructions. And then we sometimes end up redoing it. So we don't bother, right? We're so focused on just saving time. And I know this is important, but I want to remind you to try to your best to loosen the control. Try not to redo it, at least not when they're watching. Once your child completes a task, if they know you're going to do it over, they will think, why should I bother? Instead, you can try to focus on the positives and appreciate that they are trying. The consistency and practice will help. And also, you can't really expect your child to do a job as well as you would. Remember what you were like at their age and ask yourself if you were as thorough. And chances are you probably weren't either. So, you know, loosen up the control and allow them to to help. The next one, you know, they already have so much activity, so we give them a pass. Kids today juggle sports, dance, karate, guitar, piano, homework, which require a tremendous amount of time practicing. And that is when the chores can get lower priorities on their list, right? And sometimes forgotten altogether. I do admit that as a parent, I do encourage my kids to try different things. Um, It is a privilege that we have uh, to give them the opportunity to explore their interest. But what I try to do is limit their chores during the week. This is less than the amount of chores they would do during the weekend or in the summer. I space out their schedule and make sure they also get some downtime, you know, a free day or two here, which usually are the same days when my husband and I are free. So we can all relax as a family and do a family activity. This brings us to the last reason, the last common reason why we forgo the chores with our kids is, you know, it's not worth the struggle. Kids will forget. Kids will complain. It's not worth the struggle to insist they do chores because you don't want to get into that back and forth argument and complaining. But here's part of the explanation why children resist chores. It is the very nature of child development. In normal childhood development, young children and teens lack in judgment. This is because their prefrontal cortex is still not fully developed. That's the you know, the part of our, the brain that responds to situations with judgment and an awareness of long-term consequences. That part of the brain is not fully developed until around the age of 25. So kids, young children and teens at this age, they still do not have an idea of how much work is involved with the running of the household. At this stage in their development, kids are impulsive. They usually want instant gratification. They don't like working on activities that are not immediately gratifying to them. At this stage, they are still very self-absorbed. So hopefully this tidbit of information will enhance your patience with your children when they are dragging their feet to doing their chores or grumbling. Some tips to get them to do chores. Make it a habit by setting chores at the same time in this, you know, the same time in the week to create that routine. Make it fun by getting creative and making a game of it. Or even getting like a cool broom or or designing like a fun little duster. <laughs> Lower your standards and practice patience. They are learning and they will be slow at first. Be positive and praise them when they complete their tasks. You know, help your child see how they are contributing to the family. Also, make it a team effort. This will will also help strengthen bonds within the family. Another one is give them choices on which tour they would like to do or which, you know, what areas do they want to help with. This can, you know, help empower them and, you know, help them with their confidence And maybe setting up a reward system as well, you know, maybe giving them a, you know, a special treat at the end of the week for completing all their chores. So if your kids don't have regular chores now, it's never too late to get them started. Yes, they will complain occasionally. Yes, they will whine and grumble. 
but they'll be thanking you in the long run when they become more responsible, independent, confident in their capabilities, and happier adults. They may not think so now because they're young, but it is a win win for both parents and children. Chores benefit children and parents and our society. They are an important way for us parents to help children feel like they are contributing members of the family household. This will make them feel a sense of belonging and value, and this sense of belonging and value will manifest in other aspects of their lives outside the home, at school, the neighborhood, and the entire community. So, overall, we can all benefit from children taking part in chores. So, go ahead, start establishing a chore routine with your kids. Start small, be patient, and make it fun. That's all for today. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time, stay brave and own your journey. Thank you all for your time today. To sign up for my free seven part email course, please visit mariagracewolk.com. This course is for people who struggle with day to day stress and worries. By the end of the course, you will have some tools and techniques to manage your anxiety. Furthermore, if you enjoy this podcast, please be sure to hit subscribe, rate, and review. I would so appreciate it. The high rate and reviews will help others find the podcast so we can amplify, normalize, and break the mental health stigma. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the guest are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. This podcast does not substitute for personal professional services.